Because we are working on the innate immune system, our contributions uh, so far have really been uh, confined to that to that area. Um, uh, for example, we we were, have become particularly interested in an E3 ubiquitin ligase called Polino. Uh, this is a protein that was originally discovered uh, as something that interacted with a kinase called IRAC1. And uh, we've been able to establish that Polino uh, is an E3 ubiquitin ligase, but only if it's phosphorylated by IRAC1. Uh, more recently, uh, we found that in another pathway in the innate immune system, the polinos are not activated by IRAC1, but by a completely different kinase uh, called TBK1. Uh, and that this is actually very important uh, in the control of interferon production. Uh, so, so this is one, one aspect. Um, uh, we are actually taking a, an approach in this area that has not been really um, adopted in the ubiquitin area so far, uh, trying to study the, the E3 ligases as though they were kinases. So we we look to see whether these ligases are converted from inactive to active forms in response to a signal uh, by setting up assays uh, for the endogenous E3 ubiquitin ligase in, uh, in cell extracts. Uh, so, uh, so this is beginning to provide some interesting insights into how other E3 ubiquitin ligases in the system are regulated. I've also had a major interest in a family of polyubiquitin binding proteins uh, and what their roles are in innate immune uh, signaling. And for example, in the case of one of those proteins, a protein called ABIN1, we found that uh, uh, this protein, when it loses the ability to bind to ubiquitin, chains, this results in the hyperactivation of the innate immune system and actually leads to classic lupus-like uh, autoimmune diseases. So in this case it's clear that this protein uh, is uh, helping to restrain the strength of signaling in the innate immune system which is very important to prevent uh, inflammatory and autoimmune disease. And uh, th this actually is turning out to be very exciting because there are many human polymorphisms now being found which have mutations in this protein. So it's, it's clear that this protein uh, and its ability to bind ubiquitin is really very critical uh, in the regulation of innate immunity. And now we are taking a similar approach to look at the role of other members of this, of this family. And, and I think this is going to be a an exciting area in the future. Undoubtedly, in many, many more uh, components of the ubiquitin system that remain to be discovered, and even some of the recently discovered uh, E3 ligases in the system, we have no idea how they're regulated. For example, amazingly, only a few years ago, a completely new type of E3 ubiquitin ligase was discovered called LUBAC, which uh, makes uh, linear polyubiquitin chains in which the end terminal uh, region of uh, the end terminus of one ubiquitin becomes linked to the C terminus of the next ubiquitin. Before that, people thought that there were only seven types of polyubiquitin chain that could be produced by linking ubiquitin covalently to the, any one of the seven uh, epsilon amino groups of the ubiquitin molecule. But now with the formation of these linear chains, we now know there's an eighth type of chain. Uh, the question is, 
you know, what do these, you know, what proteins are these chains binding to? Uh, uh, are they, uh, because it's the ubiquitin binding proteins that decode the ubiquitin message? And uh, uh, how, for example, is this Lubac ligase regulated at all? So, so this is going to become a, a huge area, actually.